what's that? You'd like to know what Vertex AI and Firebase is? Well, it's a way to securely call the Gemini model from your mobile apps running on iOS, Android, web, or Flutter. Now let's see it all in action. I just launched the app on my phone and I'll click on the upload button. Let me select a photo of a sample accommodation. Wait for it to finish uploading and to be processed by Gemini and there we go. Gemini has generated a description for it which I can edit if I want to or I can go ahead and save it to the database. Now, remember earlier when I mentioned app check? I can go to the app check tab in the Firebase console and take a look at the requests that are coming through from my app to the Vertex AI and Firebase service. Once this feature rolls out to production and I notice in this graph that almost all of the recent requests are coming from verified clients, I can go ahead and enforce app check. The app we're adding AI Features to is a travel planning app where small business owners can list their accommodations and experiences for prospective travelers to browse. The app uses the Gemini API via Vertex AI in Firebase to generate descriptions of the images of the lodgings they upload. I've drafted a bare bones chat UI where we can start prototyping. Then I can write up a quick prompt, inserting it into the first element in the chat history. In the next step, I'll wire the chat up to the text input, and before you know it, this feature will be ready for testing. The generated output looks okay. Now let's refine it with the chat interface. It seems like the feature is working correctly, but in order to make full use of this feature, the user will have to have some familiarity with prompting. Maybe I can make it a little easier for them by also supporting images in the chat dialog. Fortunately, since Gemini supports multimodal inputs, I only need to change the client code and everything should just work. I've added this UI to allow the user to open an image picker. Once I've got the image object, all I need to do is modify the previous code to pass a heterogeneous array of strings and images to Gemini instead of passing a string directly. And that's it. I can even add video and audio file support with a few extra lines of code by converting them to data blobs and then adding them to our prompt array from earlier. <sighs> I'm feeling really lost. Generative AI is not deterministic. How am I supposed to know that the content is high quality? Have no fear, Firebase is here. Previously, you could smoke tests in Firebase app distribution with automated testing but we've made large advancements in the past year. Now, using Gemini, we built a new AI testing agent. Using the AI testing agent, you just describe your testing goals and the agent uses screen understanding and generative AI to mimic the behavior of a real test user to accomplish that goal. So if I have a user journey in mind for a customer, I think I add it here to the test goal section. Yep, exactly. Cool, it looks like the test is running. Oh look, it finished. Wow, it figured all this out? It actually wrote up a vacation description just for my goal? It's super easy to see how each action was selected and taken by the agent. I like that it tells me why it selected the action it did. App crashes can still happen. But that's why we're also using AI assistance in Crashlytics to help you quickly identify and fix any crashes so you can make sure your users have a reliable experience in your app. We've recently added a new experimental feature in Crashlytics that uses the power of Gemini in conjunction with your app's code to identify the root causes for crashes and even suggest fixes that you can apply to get things back in working order. So I've recently released an Android app and I'm currently looking at all the crashes it's collected since its launch. Let me see how Crashlytics AI assistance can help me resolve this quickly so that my users get back to having a smooth experience. I'm going to start by generating a basic insight. This won't use my app's code, just the data already available in Crashlytics. It's good, but missing some context that I think would be helpful. By clicking this new button below, I now have the option to add some of my app's code and other info that I think would help Gemini provide something more actionable. I'll paste in the recommended file and see what happens. Great. Here I can see that Gemini is being much more prescriptive and even suggesting what could be the root cause of this crash 
based on the code I inserted. This feature is available now as an experiment in the Crashlytics console and coming soon to the next Android Studio preview release. Can we teach Gemini to call the weather forecast when it generates a list of suggested activities for a location? Well, you might have heard about the concept of tool calling. I am going to define a tool called weather forecast, like so. Inside the tool, I can then call the weather forecast API. All right, once I get the results from the API, I can pass it back to the caller of the tool. Now, to enable the model called to the API, I need to register my weather forecast tool when prompting the model, right here in the generate call. Gemini already knows the coordinates for many popular locations, but we can also create a tool to help it look up locations whenever needed. Let's give it a try. I want to go on a two-week trip to Europe. So once I send the request, the model will use the data in our database to pick up places in Europe. It will then use a weather forecast tool to get local weather for the period I plan to go on vacation, and then use the data from our database to select matching activities. And here we go. It seems like the weather in Europe is going to be quite nice in the next couple of weeks. So the model suggested some outdoor activities. Let's take a look at GenKit traces to understand how the model generated this answer. Here, I can see that the model actually did call the weather API, which returned the weather conditions for various locations the model suggested. Firebase has a new AI monitoring dashboard and private preview to help us understand how our GenKit built features are performing in production, and to take some of the guesswork out of running an app with non-deterministic AI features. Here's the dashboard in the Firebase console. We can see at a high level our token usage and our core stability metrics across all of our features. These are some of the key quantitative health signals of how our app is performing in production. Let's focus on a flow called Gen Weather Flow. It takes the name of a city and returns to the user activities to do while vacationing based on the weather forecast. If we jump into one of these flows, we can see some flow level metrics and recent traces, including the city that each execution of the flow was called with. This view also lets me see if they provided any feedback signal. And hmm, in the case of nowhere, they ended up giving the response they received a thumbs down. So even though this trace technically succeeded, clearly there's something wrong that didn't quite meet this user's expectations. To figure out where things might be slipping, I can walk through the individual steps in this execution, including the intermediate inputs and outputs to the various Gemini calls that make up my flow to help me pinpoint areas of improvement. But when you look more closely at the output we got for the first step, load landmarks, the input city nowhere is returning back an empty array. My app can definitely do better than this. And to me, this signals a few action items I can take to turn this thumbs down worthy experience into a delightful one. First, I might wanna go back and refine my prompt in my load forecast step. And lastly, I wanna validate my changes locally in the GenKit dev UI before deploying again and making the change available for users. So that next time, when a user inputs a city called someplace, and you want to greet this user with a bit of delight, your feature will be ready to let them know that going someplace is better than going nowhere at all.